And now at 3 o'clock, we are talking about local efforts to combat a troubling trend, a rise in fentanyl-related drug overdose deaths. The DEA special agent in charge of the Los Angeles Field Division, Bill Bodner, now joining us live once again. It's good to see you again. Great to see you. Good to see you, too. All right, let's start with uh, drug overdose deaths fueled by fentanyl. Uh, just like uh, the sheriff was talking about uh, murder in L.A. County, these numbers have hit a record high. Yeah, they're, they're high all around the nation. Uh, for the most recent 12 months, which the CDC has complete data for, we've seen 100,000 uh, drug caused deaths in this country. That is a record. It's very unfortunate. And not only are we seeing more deaths, but we're seeing the percentage of those deaths caused by fentanyl go up one third in 2019, half in 2020, and now two thirds uh, in 2021, where we just finished. It's, it's very unfortunate, and you can see from the increasing deaths and the increasing percentage of deaths caused by fentanyl where our threat in the community is coming from. And so where are these fentanyl pills entering the U.S.? And nearly all of these pills enter the U.S. via our, uh, our border with Mexico, and most often this is accomplished by smuggling in passenger vehicles, smuggling in commercial truck. Uh, maybe they're hidden inside natural voids in a vehicle or there's aftermarket compartments built into a vehicle or they're hidden in a spare tire or sometimes just in a suitcase uh, posing as a tourist. And once they cross the border, they usually bypass uh, the area around the border and come straight up to L.A. where they can be warehoused here in the L.A. region. Yeah, this is obviously a big market. Uh, what about seizures here in Los Angeles? Are they on the rise? Three million pills last year. That's a wow. threefold inc increase over 2020. And hey, I'd like to think a lot of that is due to the laser focus we've had on fentanyl and on counterfeit prescription drugs over the over the past eight months. But the reality is that the demand for these pills is higher than ever before. And that's another thing uh, driving the, the drug trade here. Um, th these pills take away some of the stigma that's been associated with hard drug use in the past. In other words, there's not something you have to inject. They're not something you have to smoke. It's an innocuous little pill. Some people have taken the prescription drug that these are mimicked after in the past, and they feel very comfortable taking the pills. And that's why there's so many of them here, and that's why we're seeing this increase in, in death and danger to our community. It seems like we've been talking about this and how dangerous it is and not to take them. It seems like they would be aware of that on the streets, right? I mean, we're getting there. We're getting there. People still think in many cases that they are a legitimate uh, prescription drug. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, it's that deception that's killing people, especially people who are not experienced drug users. A lot of young people, teenagers, they buy the drug thinking it's something else. And just one use, you know, buying it one time is uh. unfortunately uh, enough to cause a death. All right, investigators also uncovering uh, an emerging emoji trend. What is that? So one thing that's consistent in the drug trade, right, in, for, in order for a drug transaction to take place, there has to be an agreement between two people. Uh, over the years, we've seen where and how these agreements are made change drastically. Now we're seeing a lot of these agreements made uh, and a lot of advertisements on social media and, and on online marketplace forums. Uh, this is done to kind of hide them. And again, this is where our young people go now to, to shop for things. It's a coded language that's used. And if you're not familiar with it, it's very difficult for a parent or even for a social media company to figure out what's going on. Yeah, it looks like they're just having fun with the red heart or the just even the palm tree. Ugh. And so how are you guys working to combat the trend? I, I, you know, things like this are so important right now. Reaching out to the public, let them, letting them know what's going on. Community awareness, education, we are especially focused on educating parents about this emoji trend and the social media platforms. We can't, uh, we would like to hold the social media platforms accountable for what goes on on their sites. But first, I feel like I have a responsibility to educate them uh, about kind of the coded language and the secretive language that's being used. It, it's not something that parents understand, and we should not expect that social media platforms understand it initially either. But we've really focused on the past year on educating them and hopefully uh, that awareness has reduced the number of ads online, reduced the number of social media ads, and made parents more aware so they can keep better track of what their kids are doing. Well, you guys are doing a great job, and thank you for always uh, coming on and, and sharing important information with us. Thank you for helping us spread the message. Mm -hmm. It's very important. All right, keep up the good work. We'll see you next time.